Attention. Attention. Encoded message. Javier Kajika was born in Belen, New Mexico and was a decorated former JSOC or Black Ops operative that was recruited by the division for his vast experience and tactical skills. Kajika was considered instrumental to the division's first wave. However, after the abandonment of the first wave in the Dark Zone, Kajika snapped and ensued on a personal vendetta against the JTF command, later to be redirected by Keener of course. What happened in the Dark Zone that made Kajika disavow the division and turn rogue? Who was he targeting within the JTF? And how would he benefit Keener in his plans? Then we have Kajika. I don't know about this guy. What's not to know? He checks all the boxes. Army and Spec Ops background, strong work ethic, multiple decorations and letters of recommendation. His psyche valve is inconclusive. What does that even mean? It means we don't know what's going on inside his head. It means for all we know, a little pressure and he'll snap. Did you even read his reports? He's been through hell and back. If he's going to snap, he would have already. I'm just saying it's a risk. He could just be really good at hiding his flaws. Look, can we get a second opinion? I really don't want to throw this guy out on the whims of one psychologist. I'll take care of it. The Shade recruiters discussed that Kajika on the one hand had the proper background and experience, him being a Black Ops operative, having a strong work ethic and having multiple decorations. On the other hand, he's a liability because we don't know what's going on inside his head. That would have been the first clue. Soon enough, the Green Poison outbreak happens and the first wave, including Kajika, is activated and sent to Midtown Manhattan. So, what's the structure? The police, fire department and National Guard have consolidated into the Joint Task Force. Effective immediately, the JTF will liaise with the division. They're inexperienced. Can we trust them to fall in line? There is no falling in line. They are the locals and we are the outsiders. Being local doesn't mean they'll make the right decisions. Emotional attachments cloud better judgment. Which is why we need to listen to what they have to say, get on their good side and make sure the transition runs as smoothly as possible. It's no secret that the good people of New York have struggled to contain this thing. They care about this city. It's our job to support them and keep it from falling apart. We'll get the job done. But I'm not depending on people who are already starting to crack. In response to the crisis in New York City, the JTF were formed, a coalition of the local National Guard, NYPD, NYFD and civil volunteers. Kajika shares his concerns with the agent Goswald, the agent that later disavowed the division and turned to the Black Tusk. The JTF weren't trained for a scenario like this, which is where the division agents would come in. Agents would, where possible, assist the JTF in their endeavors. As the chaos ensued, the JTF, under government order, set up a quarantine zone, later the Dark Zone, to ensure that those infected with the green poison could be contained. However, as the number of riots and supply shortages became worse, the JTF's command decided to pull out of the Dark Zone. This is Javier Kajika. Rikers have overrun the building, requesting JTF support. Request denied. We can't hold them alone. We're falling back, you should too. What? We've called an evacuation order. We need to finish this! It's already in motion. Nothing left but a couple of stragglers loose. You can't just leave! It's over, Agent. I'm not having any more deaths on my conscience. Ugh, I should have known you'd fuck us! If we stay, we're dead! If we leave, we're rogue! I'm sorry, Agent. There's nothing I can do. Over and out. Fuck! The Dark Zone was a lawless and isolated zone, with limited outside communication and dangerous gangs like the Rikers roaming the streets. Kajika, similar to Keener and many other First Wave agents, was abandoned in the Dark Zone and left to fend for himself. This betrayal wasn't taken lightly by Kajika. All these different government agencies and not one of them can hold it together long enough to make a difference. You including us in that assessment? The way things are going. It's not that bad. You clearly haven't heard about Keener. Yeah, well, he always was an asshole. And Parnell? Followed Keener around like a lost puppy. It's not exactly easy to do your job when you don't know who your enemies are. You were expecting easy? You know what I mean. What the? Are you getting this? Identification confirmed. Agent Javier Kajika. Status rogue. Fuck. His ring's red. 
After the betrayal in Dark Zone, Kajika disavowed the division and went rogue. He went on a vigilante crusade to track down and eliminate those responsible, the JTF's command. You had a choice. Stay or leave. You chose to leave. It was chaos. There was nothing I could do. You all have one thing in common. A severe lack of accountability. No, it's not like that. No? This has never happened before. So you absolved yourself of responsibility. We helped people by sacrificing others. You people don't deserve this city. Please. We can make this right. I can make this right. Let me help. It's too late for that. Please. Since you're so intent on passing the blame, I'm gonna need some names. Kajika used the intel from the track down JTF officer to hunt down the others, but it wasn't long before Kajika's crusade got the attention of someone with similar goals. It's a gift. Don't be so suspicious. What do you want? Right now, I want to make sure our paths align. The traitors and deserters who abandoned us in the dark zone. You want them dead, so do I. I'm tracking them down. With my intel and connections, you won't have to. I'm doing this my way, Keener. I can give you access to the cleaners. All you have to do is guide them in the right direction. You're working down here, they're working down here. Might as well work together. What do you get out of it? I don't get my hands dirty. And him? Consider him a down payment. So, we have a deal. You really want me to work with Kajika? It's not about what I want. It's about what we need. He's got resources we can exploit. I don't like the idea of working with someone on a vigilante crusade. That's irrelevant. He wants the JTF out of the picture. The cleaners need the same thing. Mutual benefit. If I don't trust him, the cleaners won't trust him. Which is why I need you with me on this one. He's like you. He's dedicated. He's nothing like me. Look, Viv, we're so close to achieving what we've been talking about. With Kajika on board, we can finally make it happen. I trust him to deliver on his end. He will help us succeed. Fine. You vouch for him? He's your responsibility. Keener already recruited Dragov, Parnell and Conley. Dragov delivered supplies for Keenish projects and protection for Parnell. Parnell worked on the technical side for Keenish projects. Conley, as the head of the cleaners, was a powerful asset in their fight against the Division and JTF. It's unsure what exactly Kajika adds to Keener's plans, but based on the intel we have, Keener used Kajika's bloodlust against the JTF to prevent them from undermining his plans. But what would Kajika get out of this deal? I need names. What's the rush? I don't want them alive any longer than they need to be. Restraint is a strength. You're not a division agent anymore, but don't forget your training. We had a deal. If you strike now, you'll send them right back into hiding. Don't think you can manipulate me like you've manipulated the others. I have always delivered for you, Javier. You'll get your names. But be patient. Now's not the time. Keener, most likely using the intel from his friends in higher places, had intel on the people responsible for the abandonment in the Dark Zone. In return for Kajika's support, Keener would share his intel with Kajika. But before he would do that, Kajika had to make a deal with the cleaners. Let me make one thing clear. I don't trust the Division, and I don't trust outsiders. Which makes this little arrangement problematic for the both of us. I'm not Division. Yeah? Well, you're still an outsider. The only reason we're even listening to you right now is because of Conley. Let's not make false assumptions about what this is. We are not allies, and I am not asking you to fall in line. Fine, but if you want our support, you're gonna have to give us something in return. The JTF are the only thing standing between you and eradicating the virus. I can help you bring them down. And what do you get out of this? There are people out there I'm looking for. That's all you need to know. You must be mistaken. We have our own way of settling grievances. So do I. Think of this like a ride share. Same route, different destination. We just have to get along for the journey. If that's true, we'll get along just fine. 
There's a JTF convoy heading to Battery Park. Are they infected? Does it matter? You think we do what we do for the hell of it? This shit takes a toll! They're treating the infected. We'll do what needs to be done. But on our terms. You have mine. I said on our terms. We're on damage control. We're not here to pick up your dry cleaning. This is non-negotiable. You should respect that. The cleaners are a group with a particular goal. Eradicate the virus, no matter the consequences. They didn't attack people not standing in their way. The cleaners didn't like working with others in general since their goals usually didn't align. And they definitely wouldn't work with division agents seeing their shared history. Still, they had their orders from Conley even if they were inspired by Keener. Kajika and the cleaners, although having separate goals, had the same obstacle in their path, the JTF. Kajika, as well as Conley's orders, convinced the cleaners of that. But what was it that Kajika and the cleaners were working on? So what do you think? It'll take some work, but I can get it back up and running. We'll need to get permission from Conley. Already granted. Apparently it was Kajika's idea. Then I let to get started right away. How long? How long will it take to get me 10 good engineers? Already done. And I'll need a backup crew to take care of any disturbances. Nancy's bound to attract some attention once she gets going. Nancy? Nancy gets us to where we need to go. She always gotta name your ride. After the hurricane hit lower Manhattan, the battery park sector was hit by floods, creating sinkholes where subway tunnels used to be. Kajika made this sector his home, so his knowledge of the area would work great with the cleaners. Nancy, an absolute insane unit of a drill, was used by the cleaners to bore tunnels. What their exact goal was with it is unsure, but Kajika had a plan to drill from the Ukari tunnel underneath Pathway Park all the way to Haven, the location of Kajika's final target. In the process, the Peacekeeper settlement in Lower Manhattan would be taken out, which would have benefited Keener. Analysis complete. Javier, Kajika, James, Dragoff, Theo, Parnell, Vivian, Conley. Status, Rogue. Analysis complete. Aaron Keener, status, Rogue. Data from the tactical center showed Keener and his four lieutenants, including Kajika, released a small portion of Eclipse in the city hall, the JTF base of operation in Lower Manhattan, and they put explosive charges on structurally weak parts of the building for maximum damage and casualties. Dragov and Kajika took out the guards guarding the subway so Conley could place the explosive and Keener could unleash his virus. However, the division was quick to respond as agents from DC flew in and uncovered who was behind the attack. Using the intel from the tactical center, the division knew Kajika was in the Battery Park sector, hunting JTF patrols. The local settlement heard a JTF patrol investigating tremors near the Ukari tunnel, but they never returned. Step forward. Come with us. For the rest of you, Echo, stay exactly where you are. Please, you don't have to do that! <laughs> Down. I don't know why we can't just burn him like the rest. As long as Kajika keeps his end of the bargain, we'll keep ours. What if he's infected? We just have to get him to Pathway. Then he's Kajika's problem. Can't believe they got Nancy working again. Investigating an echo near the tunnel, it appeared cleaners captured the JTF patrol. Three out of four officers, Johnson, Harris and Crawford, were torched by the cleaners. But John Bronston was taken to Pathway Park. As the agent arrived at Pathway Park, Bronson was found with a machete through his chest in the process of being murdered by Kajika. It's unsure what Bronson had done, but it was clear he was on Kajika's kill list. The agent tracked down Kajika through the rest of Pathway Park until he came across Nancy. 
Before chasing down Kijika, the agent managed to take out the drill using the cleaner's own supplies, effectively putting a stop to Kajika's plan. Eventually, the agent tracked down Kajika to his hideout, an outdated boiling room, and against the odds, the agent manages to evade the steam, Kajika's traps, eliminate the cleaners, and take out Kajika. Although Kajika was old school and kept his records analog, the agent managed to find the intel gathered by Kajika that would hopefully bring the division closer to Kinu. Rogue agent deceased. A lot of people will sleep easier with Kajika out of the way. It's terrifying how a single person can cause so much damage. I'm going in with a team to secure his hideout and any intel left behind. By the looks of it, he gathered quite a bit of information that should be useful. Hopefully, some of that will bring us closer to Keener. Kajika as a master of stealth and infiltration and with a background as a black ops operative seemed the most dangerous and effective of Keener's lieutenants. As opposed to Parnell or Dragov, it didn't seem that Kajika, other than taking out JTF patrols and people in command, added a lot to Keener's plans. Kajika's bloodlust and knowledge of the battery park sector was a useful asset to take down or hinder the JTF, but it seemed like something Keener, Dragov with his Rikers or Conley with her cleaners could do as well. I'm still left with the question which individuals Kajika was tracking down or had tracked down and what they had done exactly. In the story it seems he was eliminating JTF officers that at least on the surface didn't seem like they had anything to do with the Dark Zone betrayal. It wasn't clear if he had affiliations or contact with the other three rogue agents besides the assault on City Hall. It wouldn't surprise me if he hadn't because he was an isolated individual that mostly only cared about his personal vendetta. I would love to hear what you guys think about Kajika, his vigilante quest and how Keener used him in the comments below. Thank you for watching, I appreciate when you guys return to my videos. If you liked the video, please show so by liking or disliking it. Still, if you didn't like it, some feedback would be great. If you're new and you like game lore videos, currently mostly Division 2, but also Modern Warfare, The Last of Us Part 2 and many other games, make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with those videos. You can even support me beyond that by becoming a channel member. With that done, I'm going to work on Dragoff, Conley and Keener's videos and I'll talk to you there. Peace out.